We've heard that for years, and every time things get bad and there's another war, there's another earthquake, we always hear, oh, Jesus is soon to come. Pastor Timothy Alden has a passion for spreading the gospel. This is not intellectual. This is spiritual. But he probably talks about sex more than the average minister. What's up, everybody? This is Pastor Tim. Let's talk about sex. That's because Pastor Tim not only talks the talk, his own life is proof that sexual purity is possible. I am 50 years old and I'm still a virgin. Never had sex, never even had a kiss. Pastor Tim, you have to admit that, you know, there are people who are watching saying, this is kind of strange. He's 50 years old, he's still a virgin. What say you to that comment? I say we have a normal where there shouldn't be a normal. We have the normality of young adults and teenagers having an STD one out of four. Teenage girls getting pregnant, dropping out of high school. So for me, what should be normal isn't normal. So I want to create a new normal to say, if this guy's not married, of course he's still a virgin. Of course he's not having sex, because sex is reserved for marriage. So that ought to be the new norm. I have to tell you, I mean, you don't date, or do you? What are your thoughts on dating? How are you going to meet someone? I do not date. I have a slogan that I use at my church that says, if you don't date, you won't fornicate. And I believe that, once again, the cultural norms need to be changed. And a lot of people say, well, if you don't date, you'll never meet anybody. I think we've lost the art of friendship in our culture. People go straight from seeing somebody that looks good to them, getting their number, and delving right into the romantic aspects of the relationship. I think that every solid marriage is first built on a friendship. So before you delve into romance, you gotta start with boundaries. And so for me, dating goes beyond the boundary. I wouldn't, court, I wouldn't date someone, I would court someone. Well, that's my next question to you. If you don't date, then how are you, I know there are women wanting me to ask you this. <laughs> how do you get to know a woman then? Well, I believe that we can build a friendship with boundaries because it's easy to let your hormones and your emotions take over in a relationship. You know, it's, it's something that's amazing because there are more people that regret the choices they've made in relationships than are happy with the choices they've made. And so I say it just exercise caution, get to know that person on a friendship level. And then if it is uh, a situation where marriage is possible and it's desired and if there's compatibility, then I will pursue it to the next level, which would be a courtship. So once you get all of the passion and the emotions, you cloud your judgment. A lot of things people don't see until later, and unfortunately many times later, it's too late for a lot of people. You don't just go from A to Z. You don't get dessert before you eat the meal first. We don't have to live based upon our impulses and our hormones. We can live by our convictions instead of our preferences. And I really think that message needs to get out for all the people out there that are struggling. You believe then that your message is revolutionary. I believe that with this message of abstinence, we're living in such a pivotal time in history that it really is an anti-corruption message. I believe it's time for corrupt old leadership to go down and for God to raise up righteous leaders the Bible says when the righteous rule, the city rejoices. Uh, right now in our culture, we have cities protesting because of unrighteousness, because of corruption. And I believe that your sexuality has a lot to do with your character. And I believe for every corrupt leader, there's usually a mistress somewhere. And so when people can exercise the art of self-control, self-discipline, and delayed gratification, they become better leaders. And they can lead with a moral standard and righteousness, which would bring justice and prosperity and peace to the cities and the nations of our world. Uh, we had a sexual revolution in the 60s, and look what we see today, over 40 years later. Breakdown of the family, uh, fatherless children um, running the streets with no direction, no mentoring, a crumbling education system, a crumbling infrastructure as far as opportunities for our youth, especially in the urban inner cities. God is going to cause this city to become a model of what transformation looks like. Pastor Tim's message of abstinence landed him on a popular reality TV show. Preachers of Detroit, I was approached by the producers to be a part of the show. And because my story is unique and that is what made them interested, uh, being a virgin at 50 years old and also being a white guy that was adopted and raised by a black family, I thought that would be a good platform to broaden the impact of the message. Pastor Tim, what message do you have for people who are hurting? You know, they want a do-over in life. They've made the wrong decisions where sexuality is concerned. What do you say to them? This message of purity and abstinence is a message of hope. 
Some have accused me of being condescending because I'm a virgin. I realize most people are not virgins. The unfortunate part is when I go in schools and minister to teens, most of them are not virgins. But there's hope for a secondary virginity. There's hope for a new beginning. You know, people say God is a God of second chances. I say he's a God of new beginnings. And everybody can start again. And you know, I believe everybody is longing for that sense of innocence, that sense of purity, that clean slate. And there are people out there that that is a possibility. That is an opportunity that they have. Every day they open their eyes. You know, the love of God woos us and draws us and calls us to himself. And I said all the time, you know, I'm still a virgin. So uh, committing a, a sexual sin physically wasn't my sin, but there are other sins. Jesus said, if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, he's already committed adultery in his heart. So the same grace that's been appropriated to me, I want it to be appropriated to so many lives out there who are looking for a better way. They're looking for a higher way. And they know that they're better than what they've been through and they're better than what they're in right now. And they can come out of it and begin again.